Welcome to the Sonoran Desert. Tucked in the southwest corner of the continent, the Sonoran is one of the hottest and wettest deserts in North America. The Sonoran Desert is home to thousands of species of plants and animals, including lots of flowering plants like this brittle bush, as well as many species of grasses, including an invasive species called buffalo grass. Now this buffalo grass is beautiful, but it's an aggressive invader species. It's taking over thousands of square kilometers of habitat, squeezing out other plants that live in the desert. Now even though the Sonoran is changing, life still goes on for animals and plants like these desert harvester ants. And this desert spiny lizard. And this beautiful barrel cactus. And don't forget reptiles like this desert tortoise. Out of all the interesting plants and animals in the Sonoran, one animal in particular has had the most impact on this really fascinating ecosystem. For almost 3,000 years, the Cahuilla Indians have grown melons, squash, beans, and corn in this wet desert environment. They gathered plants and seeds for food, medicines, and basket weaving. And the Cahuillas are still here today, managing and protecting one of the most fascinating habitats in the Sonoran Desert, the riparian fan palm habitat. Now this beautiful habitat provides food, shelter, water, and lots of other resources for thousands of species of plants and animals, including some very rare and interesting species of birds that live only in the Sonoran Desert. And this part of the Sonoran Desert is crisscrossed by a network of beautiful canyons. One of them, Murray Canyon, which has something very unique called the Seven Sisters. So Murray Canyon is broken up into seven different pools called the Seven Sisters. And each of these pools is uh, very beautiful in its own right with lots of different plants and animals. And the really interesting thing about these uh, little pools is that each of them creates their own little habitat with plants and animals that live in them that wouldn't survive or stand a chance even 200 yards out into the desert away from where they are now. There are thousands of species of plants in the Sonoran Desert, but one of the most important for this habitat is the Washingtonia filifera, or the fan palm tree. So here's a perfect example of some mature fan palm trees. And as you can see, the fan palms themselves die off and by the weight of gravity just kind of fall down and layer themselves along the trunk of the tree which causes this great big tuft which is all very thick dead fan palms. Now the Cahuillas, well adapted to living in a desert environment, use these fan palm leaves to thatch the roofs of their huts. This provided good ventilation, shelter from the sun, but also, if thatched properly, made a nice, dry, waterproof roof. And the fan palm is also very important for providing habitat for small mammals and birds like this rare Bell's Vireo. On my way to Fern Canyon by way of Victor, it is a relatively inhospitable trail. 
through some desert wash and it's pretty hot out here now it's got to be in the probably high 80s which doesn't seem very hot but it's pretty dry there's a bit of a wind blowing so it's not too bad um, but we're gonna go into this inhospitable uh, canyon to see if we can see some interesting birds hear some especially if we can't see them at least and uh, I've been told by the ranger there might be a rattler or two up there so uh, hopefully if we're lucky we won't hear or see any of those So besides the jet airliner in the sky, this little pocket of fan palms has been the quietest so far on this hike. There are few people on this stretch. It's close to closing time for the park. And uh, there's lots of really nice little bird songs here and there. And as soon as the jet plane stops or flies by, I'm going to See if I can capture some of those beautiful sounds. <laughs> so there's the rattler that I've been waiting for. Kind of scared me a little bit considering I was standing right in front of him with my back turned to him. And he let me know that I stepped a little too close. Western diamondbacks are usually second-level carnivorous consumers, eating rats, mice, and rabbits. But young Western diamondbacks are often known to eat other reptiles, like this whiptail lizard. The beautiful Sonoran Desert ecosystem is a fragile place, and growing human populations are threatening many of the species of plants and animals that call the Sonora their home. For millions of years, plants and animals have competed with each other for valuable resources such as clean water, clean air, sunshine, food, and soil. But it is humans in particular that have a special obligation to balance their environmental practices to assure that all the plants and animals that live in any ecosystem have a fair chance of surviving. <laughs> 